Welcome back to the adventures of Beefstick the Barbarian. Uh, if my voice sounds weird, I don't know that it does, I can't really tell. It's because I've been super duper sick, which is also why I've been releasing less videos. Because I just haven't had the willpower to get up and get over to the computer. But anyway, enough moping. Back on the horse, as they say. So, um, last time, basically just, uh, spent pretty much the whole time inside the inn in, uh, Defiance Bay, talking to people, um, pilfering a few things here and there. Um, I met this woman who got socked in the eye by what I'm assuming was her fiance. Um, offered to have a quote-unquote talk with the guy, but um, she told me to just give him back what I can only assume is their engagement ring. She doesn't want me to kill him or rough him up or anything, so I'll do that. Hopefully I can do it non-violent like. Um, this house is here, but first I'm gonna go in the expedition hall and check it out. The dozens may not like us foreigners much, but they certainly don't mind taking our corn. Hmm. Sure. <laughs> Brandon Bandon Lear. A well-groomed man steps through the hall with a confident swagger, a smug grin etched on his face. He is flanked by five other hard-looking individuals. Bind the Nimble. One of his companions eyes you for a moment before spitting chew at your feet. Another pup come wandering in, I see. Just know that Bind's giant slayers run things around here and you'll be fine. Never heard of them. His eyes narrow. You have now. Stick around the Fiends Bay and you will again. Plenty of bounties to go around, but there's a reason the giant slayers get the lion's share. Remember that. Voice fellows across the hall. Enough jabber, Bind. You gonna do the job or talk about it? His jaw tightens. Weenan's right. That's that coin ain't gonna that coin ain't going to collect itself. He looks at his comrades and jerks his chin toward the door. See you around, pup. Well, I don't like that guy. There's some souls to reach into. Let's do that. You see this Orlin cautiously making his way down a dark stone corridor. His eyes are wide and he is constantly looking over his shoulder. Every noise making his jump and making him jump. He appears dressed for adventuring, but his armor is ill-fitting and his pack refuses to stay on his back. Another sound reaches his ears from behind him and he spins around, peering into the darkness, trying to discern the source of the noise. He stands there for several seconds, holding his breath, staring. When nothing happens, he lets out a relieved sigh and turns to continue walking. His pack slips from his shoulder and cooking implements tumble out, ascending a clattering din down the quiet hall. He freezes, listening in the tomb silent aftermath of the accident. Booming footsteps, footsteps reach his ears from behind him. He lets out a little squeal and runs away from the approaching creature, clattering through the spilled gear. The footsteps speed up and the Orlan squeals again, hurrying down the hall. There is a guttural growl growl close behind him and he turns to see an ogre emerge from the darkness behind him. The squeal becomes a yell and he turns and he puts his head down and breaks into a run. The ogre steps on the spilled gear and lets out a bellow of pain, breaking stride and looking down at its foot as it continues to hop forward. Panicked, the Orlan hits a tripwire pulled across the corridor without even noticing it here there. It knocks his feet out from under him and he tumbles to the floor, rolling a bit before ending up on his back. He lifts his head slightly and looks down the hall. 
the ogre has regained its stride and is running at him, hand out, intent on grabbing him. Both Orlan and Ogre are unaware of the battle axe, swinging a deadly arc through the air, accidentally tripped by Orlan. The axe buries itself in the Ogre's face, stopping in its tracks, hand extended, blood making a trail down its face and dripping to the floor. The Orlan stares wide-eyed as the Ogre goes limp, its weight slowly pulling it off the axe with a wet, sucking sound. It comes loose falls, eliciting a final squeal from the Orlan, who scoots backward to avoid getting squashed by the fallen ogre's head. After a few moments processing what just happened, the Orlan quickly scram scrambles over the ogre's body and runs down the hall towards the exit. Corrin. You see three human boys walking through a city street, pushing each other and joking with one another. They stop, one of them pointing down the road, and look at each other. This Orlin, though younger and smaller, is the target of their attention. She has a handful of coins that she passes from hand to hand and is moving toward the marketplace. The boys move quickly, working their way around her through the crowd until they form a line in front of her herding her into a shadowy corner away from the main th thoroughfare. The boys taunt her, accusing her of stealing coins, talking over her protests of innocence. They threaten her, telling her they will turn her over to the city watch for thievery if she doesn't give them the coins because they can, because they can help at least three unfortunates with the money. One of the boys reaches for the coins, but she pulls her hand back. He cuffs the side of her head, and grabs her hand, forcing it open, letting the coins drop into his palm. The boys laugh, thanking her for her service, then disappear into the crowd. The Orlan looks around, tears welling in her eyes. She spies a member of the watch and runs over, telling him that she was just robbed. The guard is unmoved, informing her that if, the, that if he helps, she's just going to let it happen again next time. She protests, telling him that it's his job to help, but the guard is unmoved and unmoving. She stares at him for quite some time, fury burning behind her eyes. Without saying another word, she turns and storms off, her face set with resolution. All right, let's talk to women. Don't stand on ceremony. State your business. This rough-looking man glances at you briefly as he scans the mercenaries milling around the room. Tell me about the dozens. Winan's expression becomes serious, the timbre of his voice deepening. Good men and women trying to walk in the footsteps of great men and women who came before us. We're a loose association of warriors and expeditionaries in Durwood. Not as fancy as the Crucible Knights, mind you, but at least we remember our roots. At least they remember someone else's roots and pretend to be like them, he means. Your roots? The Crucible Knights take pride in having won the Durwood's freedom 150 years ago, but we're the ones who've protected it. Everyone knows that the Saints' War ended when the Godhammer destroyed Wadewin at the Evan Dewar Bridge. A lot of folks don't know how Wadewin wound up on that bridge. Seven men, five women. They walked out of Halgat Citadel and faced down a god, held him there until the bomb went off. He thumps the table. That's the legacy we defend. Some call us mercenaries, but we don't need that matching armor and silky clothes to remember our roles. We're the same now as we were then. We stand up for the people. First line of defense, whatever it takes. We've got new enemies now. If it's not Wade when it's his damned legacy. It's the damned soul butchers in the Brackenberry making things worse on all of us, probably causing the whole thing one way or another. Well, we haven't gone anywhere, and there's a lot more than twelve of us now. We defend Durwood once. We defended Durwood once. We'll do it again. When and casually nods your way, his eyes continue to float from mercenary to mercenary as he speaks. What else do you need? I'm looking for work. Go see Osric. He's usually got something. You do well for him, maybe I can find you more. He looks you up and down. Finally, he points to a man leading drills. 
Okay. Osric it is. That's a cool map. Daggers mark, mark the locations of various and within ruins. Notes posted around the map list bets on current expeditions. There's Osric. For the last time, Aidwick, keep your fucking blade up. If that dummy was armed, it'd have your head off. This man watches the training adventurers with the disinterest contempt of someone whose skill skills are wasted in this setting. He barks at one of them. I'm looking for work. You want an expedition? Talk to Wenon. I just handle these mercenary shit shovelers. Uh, adventurers, I mean. Wenon clears his throat in the background and Osric's mouth puckers. But Wenon just told me to go talk to you. Although, he sizes you up, I do have something I need done. Something that requires, he glances sidelong at an adventurer flailing away helplessly at a dummy. Competence. What do you need done? I was formerly one of the Knights of the Crucible. When I left, they kept my arms and armor. The arms they can have, but the armor belonged to my family. I'd like it back. Why don't you just go ask for it back? No, no. Oh, they'd like that, I'm sure. But I won't be going. Sooner be torn apart by dogs than give them the satisfaction. Osric looks away from you, his chai, jaw protruding. Doesn't sound like leaving the Crucible Knights was your choice. You don't choose to leave knighthood. The Crucible Knights, they may not be a real knighthood, but the oaths you swear are just as true. He stares off a moment. Still... Turns out that even unofficial knighthoods have politics. You cross the wrong man, suddenly all kinds of accusations are thrown your way, and nobody believes you. Nothing more destructive than a crowd with the wrong idea. What's this armor? It's a breastplate. Not much to look at, and it's seen far too much use, but it's been in my family since the liberation. I'll see what I can do. Then it's Penhelm you're looking for. A low snake of a man. If he was to die choking on his own black tongue, it'd be too kind of fate. He kept it when he had me kicked out. He nods with a trace of gratitude. I got word from a reliable source that Penhelm visited a forger in Andra's gift, right after being soul-scanned by a cipher in Dunreed Row. Should you have it in your heart to find a way to ruin his life while you're there, well, drink's on me. He leans in closer. Having a soul lineage read? It's a requirement to join the Knights. They have to ensure an novitiate doesn't have a subversive lineage. If Penhelm's superiors found out his affidavit was a fake, his career would be over. Every novitiate gets an affidavit from Dunreed Row, and those are stored at Crucible Keep. If you find Penhelm's, one of those ciphers could tell you if it's real. Well, I mean, if he really did forge it, I probably wouldn't have no qualms about um, basically screwing the guy over, but I'm not going to go out of my way. Like, if, if his affidavit was real, then I'm going to leave the guy alone. Sagani scratches the back of her neck. If generations of Masik's tradition are any indication, this penhelm probably doesn't remember it. Still, a past like that has to count for something. All right. in here. Ah. Hail, traveler. The woman looks up from a polishing a dagger. Haven't seen you before. You headed out with an expedition? She raises an eyebrow. Or are you betting on one? Can I buy something? I'm afraid not. See, the dozens only do business with me so long as I only do business with them. And they're good customers. She jerks her thumb at the door. But if you get on uh, Osric's good side, 
he could make an exception for you. He's probably training some of the new recruits right now. Yeah. Well, he's given me a job to do, so I suppose after I do that for him, I could buy stuff from you. How long have you worked at Admiff's Den? She leans on the countertop and drums her finger. Oh, a few years. I got in the minute the uh, last merchant cleared out. She nods towards the main area of the hall. They've got new expeditions venturing out every week, so this is a great place to do business. And the dozens make loyal friends and loyal customers, so long as you stick by them. She taps the counter. The vendor who was here before me, they ran him out when he sold his best helms to a pair of crucible knights. I've been careful not to make that same mistake. Tell me about the expeditions. There are groups of adventurers that venture into the wilderness. More than a few of them try their luck scouring the ruins. Most of them come back empty-handed, if they come back at all. Betting on them is almost as risky as actually going, but that's how the expeditions get funded. And every once in a while, one of the adventure companies will strike it big and make a fortune out for their backers. in here. What? Well, I think I have the skill. I have three mechanics. That's not good enough. Right. Sure. Let's pay a visit to this guy who beat up his uh, fiance. Exchange some words with him. Hopefully not fisticuffs. Genius. You see a small band of people walking down a rutted road, surrounded by a thick forest. This man walks alongside them, chatting and joking like they were lifelong friends. Though his appearance is one of frivolity, his jovial facade is betrayed by the occasional sideways glance into the dense tree line. There is a noise from the trees around them, the sound of someone breaking a twig. The man holds up his hand silencing the travelers and destroying the light-hearted tone of the evening. They look around, worried expressions on their faces, gathering closer together. The man motions to the group to stay where they are and heads into the trees. There is silence for several seconds as they all strain to hear anything, clutching one another nervously. There is another rustling, this time coming from the direction of the man entered direction the man entered the woods. A single figure emerges from the tree line and the group visibly relaxes, seeing him approach. The figure comes close enough for the group to see his face and one of them lets out a cry of dismay when they realize that it is not their friend. No sooner has the sound left his mouth than another group emerges from the woods, weapons drawn, surrounding the travelers. As none of them are armed or in any state to fight, they, qu they are quickly subdued, bound and relieved of their valuables. With a laugh, the bandits disappear back into the woods, leaving their quarry on the road. Safely back inside the forest, they meet up with the man. He smiles, mocking the gullibility of people who will trust a complete stranger as long as he buys them a drink. He takes his share of the spoils and leaves. Ah, highwaymen. So 
addict. Mercenary addict addict. Before I do anything, let's uh, save the game. I already saved you when I entered the house anyway, but okay. Feel free to make yourself comfortable down here. Top floor is off limits. Mercenary, mercenary. Mercenary. The guard holds up a hand as you approach. You can turn right back around. The lower floor is all yours, but nobody goes upstairs. Why not? Scowls. Because you'll be breathing through new holes in your neck if you head up there. That's why. Just mind your own business. Once once you're on this feth, you're not going to care much anyway. Where you are. Hmm, I could prime him. Any chance you could look the other way? The guard narrows his eyes, then takes the money. I do like the view over that way. He turns around. Oh, there's Pernisk. I might not need to go upstairs. Let me reload. Real quick. I'm not gonna go upstairs if I don't need to. Sure. Not right away, anyway. Alright. The man before you flashes a two feet and rather unpleasant grin. Well now, new face. Welcome, friend. Name's Pernisk, and this, he gestures to the room around you, is my humble abode and place of business. And I do hope you're in, you're in here to do some business. He glances at the nearby guards. Kendra asked me to give you this. Pernis takes the ring and turns it around on his finger. Nice, what's this for? You don't... No wonder Kendra's left you. Pernis laughs. Oh yeah, I see now. She's making a statement, is she? Good riddance to her then. Sorry I ever spent the coin to begin with. Wow, this guy's an asshole. Now is that it? Seems a difficult thing to forget, giving your grandmother's ring to someone. Maybe she's just not worth remembering, eh? Bernus snorks. While you're playing lapdog for her and all, why don't you go back and tell her to keep clear of here? She seemed to care for you. Why are you doing this? Plenty of stars in the sky. Tell her to go set up in the salty mast if she's feeling lonely. Bernus shrugs. Me and her are done. So, I could investigate further, go upstairs, where I imagine uh, his dealers are, and it will probably get violent, and I may need to get violent with him. I told her I wasn't going to stir up trouble. How dare you hit your own fiancé? How can you live with yourself? She was asking for it, Pernice Krause, sort of like you right now. Maybe you ought to quit digging around in affairs that don't concern you. Me? I got business to get back to, he points. Doors that way. Hmm. I think this will get me into a fight. Well, I have it saved. Something's not right here, and I don't plan on leaving until I find out what's going on. Turn a size narrow. Then you won't be leaving at all, friend. I was tired of wearing this face anyhow. Guards, to me! Oh, no shit. It's not even Pernisk. Ah. Okay. Well then. Looks like a fight it is. Huh? Hmm? Huh? Hmm? Probably gonna get slaughtered though. Look how many mercs there are around here. 
Yes. What? He's almost dead, at least. What? Drop down the heel. How may I help? Switch everybody over to melee because we're surrounded. Stagger's back holding a bloody hand in front of him. I give up, just leave and I'll go peacefully, alright? Too late. Wow, I don't even have a choice. Oh, he's dead anyway. Kaboom. Alright, now I can concentrate on killing these mercs. Hey. Let's see, let's knock this guy down. Yeah? Leaf sticks all the way over here. Wow. Okay. Take this guy out. On your word. Attack him. Hmm? What happened to that heal you were cast endurance? That heal, man. How may I help? What happened to the spell? Oh, when I went into conversation that canceled all my frickin' uh, that's stupid. down but at least I got the heal up that should keep the rest of my guys alive hey point the way Skeletons out here. Yeah. Oh, well, Kana's about to go down, but at least he got his skeletons out first.
Not cast in your spell. Was the enemy too far away and he couldn't get find a path to him? That's the only thing I can. Uh, Assume is why it wouldn't cast the spell. Hey. Oops. Alright, looks like I have this under control. Huh? Three mercenaries left. And they're all almost all dead. Uh, 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 uh. intent for this to uh, get violent but that was obviously not Pernisk. I wonder if he's being held captive upstairs or if he was killed even. Point the way. Plus I get a whole bunch of stuff I can sell off. And a grimoire. Nice, another grimoire. Probably gonna sell a couple of them off once I copy the spells now because I don't need four grimoires. Dagger, 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 mace, mace. The robe is good. DR5, ooh. That. I may hold on to. Let's play. Pat a cap. Pat a cap, pat a cap, pat a cap. Lock picks. Fine rope is better than this padded armor. What about Alof? What's he got wearing? He's got leather armor that's even better than that. Well, that's the more recovery speed, but the extra ability area of effect. Yeah, I'm gonna. This guy, he's got hide armor. Yeah, I'm gonna give this to Durance. Aw, oh, damn, that is stylish. Aw, oh, snap. Aw, oh, with the tricorn hat and the robe. Damn, Derns, how are you going to keep the ladies off you? All right, well. Point the way. Hey. I'm here. Hey. Hmm? Hmm? Following your lead. Hi? I'm here. Right. Hello. Hello? Huh? Yeah? Yes? Oh, this mercenary right here, he doesn't even know what's about to happen to him. You are about to get gunned down, buddy. Whoa, what, what, what are you, why aren't you shooting him? You telling me you can't see him from there? I've got, hey. what the? Freaking shoot him. Wow. How did they not, they had the angle at him. It's, he wasn't really tucked behind, oh my God. Yeah? Alright, whatever. Hey. Okay. 
Yeah? Bunch of stuff to sell off. That's good. That is very good. Speaking Ready, of which, watcher. sure. There's nobody around to see me uh, nick this stuff right here. What? Quickly and quietly. You see nothing. You see nothing. And 20. Oh well. That's fine. That'll work. Hey. Huh? Alright, guys, reload. Point the way. This book of Valian love sonnets has a dedication on the first page to my beloved Kendra. Yeah, so it's not that uh, Parnas became a drug addict, it's that Parnas seems to have been replaced. That wasn't Parnas at all. Now, what happened to actual Parnas? Someone has peeled the labels from these bottles. They've, st they've stuffed with dark, gunky pulp that gives off a pungent odor. Is that what the Sveph is? A couple of crude beds have been improvised from an assortment of tattered blankets and pillows. Dribbles of some dark liquid stain the fabric. Fabric. These people are too out of it to see me snagging this. This isn't a, a steel table anyway. Is that the Sveth? Yes, it is. Plus four will, plus ten max endurance, minus two focus, minus two perception, minus four resolved. Sveth can be traced back to provisioners in the Valian Republics, where they mark where the markets for the plant in question and joy, and joy rapidly rising demand. Most commonly chewed or inhaled, Sveph is infamous for the near catatonic state in which it often places its adherents. Those who use it claim that the drug gives them a sense of urgency and meaning lost when the effect f effects fade. More colorful accounts claim that the drug allows one to look within themselves and witness the sight of their own soul. Yeah, I'm sure it does. What else can I pilfer? Except that table right there. Rice. Pots are crusted shut with some identifiable gunk. Let's do a new save game before I head upstairs. Who knows what uh point the way what awaits me up there. Nothing pleasant, I'm sure. So it looks like we have three rooms. Right. Nice and slow and sneaky. There's some mercenaries. They haven't seen me yet. Let's see what's down here before I take them out. Potion of major regeneration. Saint Wade when farmer become God. 
With the mention of the name Wadewin, most folk think only one word, God Hammer. While this event echoes through the ages and is still felt years after the destruction of Ivan Dewar Bridge, Wadewin's humble beginnings belied the powerful force he would grow into. Wadewin lived an unassuming life in a remote area of Ritzeres, the son of Vorla's farmers. He toiled in the fields alongside his father for 22 years until his father's death. The farm then fell to, to him to run. He considered selling, but had no other skills upon which to draw, so he set on the path of Vorla's farmer as well. Nothing of note has been recorded in Wedwin's life until four years after his father's death. One day, while working the fields, Wedwin's life was irrevocably changed. In his words, Night was falling, the fingers of dusk already gripping the sky. The sun had dipped behind the world's edge and stars were peeking from beyond the shroud. The day was still and darkness had blanketed the field. I placed my first, last harvest of the day into the collection pile, when from behind me arose a brilliant light. I turned, fear in my breast, knowing not what could have caused such intense radiance. Behind me stood a blazing figure, resplendent in glory. Its white flesh glowed with a luminescent radiance, its head a blinding ball of light, brighter than the highest sun of mid-year. I averted my gaze, afraid I would be struck down for daring to gaze upon such a creature. A sudden peace washed over me, sweeping away my fear, leaving my troubled soul tranquil. A loving warmth wrapped its arms around me. A voice spoke to me as I stood transfixed, trying to both see the glorious being and avoid its dazzling scrutiny. Fear not, it said to me, for you are chosen above all others. You will be the light to bring about the rebirth of an empire. It then held out its hand and bestowed upon me a vision of power, such that I could scarcely contain it. Wade went, disheveled and dirty, stumbled into the, his village the next morning, telling all who would listen about the miracle that happened in his fields. Aeothus himself, he claimed, had appeared to him. He was to punish the other and govern, governor for leading his people into ruin. A way, a way would be provided, and those faithful who helped would be blessed when the divinity manifested. Villagers ignored him, convinced the loss of his parents had broken his mind. But Wedwin continued to preach of the power of Aeothus and the corruption of the governor, eventually earning him the ire of the locals. His confrontations with the villagers hit a turning point one day in mid-autumn. A crowd had gathered around Wadewin, jeering him and telling him to leave the village. The Vorla's crop that season was particularly light and the villagers blamed Wadewin, saying he had angered the gods, particularly Aeothus, with his blasphemy. They backed him into one of the withered fields, yelling at him to go. Accounts of the uh, inciting actions are hazy. Some say a stone was thrown, others say he was pushed. Others still say he simply tripped over a dry root sticking from the ground. Regardless of the cause, Wadewin landed face down on the ground and the villagers standing over him laughing. Enough! A voice, not Wadewin's, boomed across the field. Wadewin looked up at the crowd, his eyes glowing with a blinding white light. He stood, but did not stand. One moment he was on the ground and the next he was standing before the ground who cowered before him. You dare deny me? The voice spoke through Wadewin's mouth. You dare refuse my servant? Wadewin's arm raised. Wadewin's arms raised, beginning to luminesce. You dare require proof? His arms went out to his sides. Never ask again, lest you be burned in the light of the new dawn. There was a flash of light from Wadewin's eyes and hands of the, and the entire field sprang to life. The once dried and brittle plants became full, lush, and verdant. The crowd was silent. From somewhere in the back came a call of praise Aeothus, and, the, and they all fell to their knees in front of Wadewin, a farmer turned god.
actually not a bookcase, it looks like uh, jars and bottles. The most unfortunate tale of Favia and Berna. Oh, I already read this. Alright, so I guess it's time to take out these mercenaries here. Eh? No problem. Huh? Following your lead. What? I? Yeah? Huh? On your word. Point the way. I? Hmm. So got four mercenaries. All right, let's just unload into the first one. Bam! How you like them apples? Lock off this hey. uh, entrance here. Bam. Hey. Yeah. What? I? Hmm? Oh, did I forget to switch to melee? Hmm? Hmm? Only on beef stick, I guess. Hi? Okay, everybody else I'm is here. still fine. Hmm? Two damage, damn. Hey. hey. Move over just a little bit. And then there you go, so that Ituma can get hey. to him. And knock his ass down again, just for the hell of it. Hi? Beefstick made short work of that dude. pretty low on health. A little bit worried about that. Ooh, magical items. This I like. Fine flail, fine spear, fine stiletto, fine small shield. All into the stash. Ready, Watcher. Got it. Fine greatsword. 
And a rusty bronze key. That I'll keep. Everything else goes into the stash. Point the way. So this room here is where things are going to go down, I'm assuming. Right. Brigandine, Elune. Oh yeah, I read about this before. Lots and lots of money, which is good. I like money. I need it for my uh, stronghold. It appears as though someone rummaged through these this uneven row of books in a hurry. These jars are chipped and cracked as if knocked to the ground and set back in place. Aterran dialects. The sun does not set on the Aterran language. Those of us who commune with this proud language, or some derivation of it, populate every corner of the Aura. Most of us who speak this wonderful tongue know it as a dern, but scholars and those obsessed with correctness often qualify it as modern or contemporary a dern. This is to contrast the language you and I speak today with Eld a dern, the old elven language that was spoken in the Adern Empire back before the pioneers set, pioneer settlers of the Durwood built their longships. If Eld a dern could be considered the mother of the living a dern, the language of Hill speak could be seen as a Durn's cousin. Hill speak is fading from the common use, but many of the elves, especially the older one, in the Adern heartland still use the dialect. Whether you know it or not, if you can read these words, you can understand Hill speak. It is almost identical to Adern, but includes a large vocabulary of archaic words that have fallen out of use in today's Adern. When you hear Bart sing old Adern poems, there are often lines of chorus that sound like melodic nonsense inserted to complete rhymes. These are usually instances of words that are lost from our common language, but still used in Hillspeak. While Hillspeak is familiar to speakers of so-called modern Adern, the same cannot be said of the language's predecessor. Eld Adern is a dead language, spoken by academics, but not used in any major community. Elder Dern words are often familiar to Adern readers, but the words use orthography that has since been abandoned. Unfamiliar accent marks abound. For example, Elder Dern contains some diphthongs that have no place in the modern Adern, as well as a few tricky consonant clusters. Ea creates an Ea sound that sounds like the colloquial salutation Ea. Ao sounds like Ao. This sound is still used in the modern day, in the modern word Aora. A is pronounced Ai, such as in Wraith, Aith, Wraith, Ai, Ai. No. Ue and U both create U, long U sounds, as in loop. Y sounds like an E sound, as in B. GJ sounds like the consonant Y, as in U. SC sounds like SH, so you pronounce scop as shop. CG sounds like DGE. End of a word like hedge. Oh, okay. It is not uncommon for a given name of Adurns, Derwoodens, and Reetsaras to come from old Adurn. Some examples. Aldwin is pronounced Aldween because of the long vowel sound on the Y. Dernisk is pronounced Dernish because of the final SC cluster sound like the SH sound. Yester is pronounced Yester on account of the GJ consonant cluster. Slick is pronounced like sludge. Thursk is pronounced thirsh. Usgrim is ushgrim and not uskgrim. God, I'll never remember all of this. I'm gonna still keep butchering these words later on. I'll do my best though. Yingmar is pronounced ingmar, leading with a vowel sound. Alright, well. 
I predict bad things happening in this room. So. Hey, of course. Yes? Of course. Yeah? Hmm? Oh, is that Pernisk? Yeah, it is. Oh, maybe there isn't going to be bad huh? things going on in here. Right. Oh. One side of the overturned vase is splotted with crimson. A man lies, bound and bloodied on the floor before you. His face is a tapestry of bruises, and blood is splattered across several corners of the room. The man cringes and sobs as you approach. Gods, please. Please, no more. I can't take any more. I'm not here to hurt you. The man pauses, gazing at you. You're... you're not. Oh, praise Baraf. You're not one of his men, are you? He glances nervously behind you. I... Shakes his head. Please, I don't know who you are, but my name is Pernus. This is my house. You have to help me. Then who was that downstairs? Uh, an imposter. Some wizard named Nirid. He came to my house, tied me up in here to torture me, and now, now he, he and his men are eating my food, breaking my things, selling sveth inside my own house. He blinks. He just turned up all of a sudden? Whatever you're holding back, spit it out. This would be a lot easier if you weren't trying to hide something. Pernus looks away, unable to meet your gaze. I may have hung onto a tiny portion of my supply of share, but I needed that money. What exactly happened? He sent over the wizard, Nirid, the man downstairs, Pernus shudders, to make up the lost copper, I guess, and to hunt me while I was at it, while he was at it. Feels like it's been days. It's already taken care of. Pernus stares at you. Can't believe this nightmare is finally over. He grins weakly. Then seems to remember something. You've no idea what you've done for me, but he looks up to you up at you in a way. I need to find my love, Kinra. Only after whatever Nir put her through, I'm afraid she won't give me a chance to explain. But she might listen to you. Please, she must she must be somewhere in Capital and it's the only home she's known. And please don't tell me about don't tell her about the Sveth. About what I, what I do. I can make it worth your while. A discount, maybe? Kinra sent me here in the first place. Sh she did? Pernus smiles brightly. That woman helped save my life without realizing it. Please, bring her home and tell her that everything is back to normal. I'll go talk to her. But I am going to tell her the truth. I can't thank you enough, truly. I've missed my poor Kinra. Someone has gathered sheets and towels in a makeshift bed. The rumpled fabric is stiffened with blood and unwashed sweat. People have cleared out, huh? Probably they got woken up by the sounds of fighting and were like, yep, oh, we're out. Can't say I blame them. That and damn man, all the spep is gone. No point in sticking around this joint. truth though. Kinra looks up as you approach. What happened with Pernus? Did you give him the ring? Pernus 
Pernus was being impersonated by a powerful wizard. However, the real Pernus also deals with it. She blinks at you, stunned. I had no idea Pernus key. She brings her fist down on the table, sloshing her drink. Damn it! How can I trust him after something like this that he's lied to me for so long? She runs her hand through her hair and takes a deep breath. I should just be glad I found out about this before the wedding. He still loves you. Do you really want to give up your future together? Perhaps you're right. If he's willing to give it up, we can work this out. It seems worthwhile to give him a chance anyway. Oh, and take this. She unclasped something from her neck. Picked it up on, off one of the merchants to help me stand firm in my decision. I'll be fine without it now. Oh yeah, level up. What did she give me? Unwavering resolve. Plus two intellect, plus one resolve. Nice. Hmm, I'd have to get rid of this cloak. I want to increase his intelligence so he has a larger AOE. Yeah. I'll give this to probably her. Bam. Now my man's up to 15 intelligence. Larger area of effect. Very nice. Taxes collected. Lost 73 coppers to bandits. Earned 626 coppers. Nice. Okay. All right, let's level, level up some people. All right, yeah, there. Hmm. Let's get you up to stealth four. And can't really afford anything else, so. I'll save it for next time. I mean, I could get lore and mechanics, but neither of these are really going to do them any good. Fighter abilities. Vigorous defense. The fighter becomes fiercely determined to deflect all incoming blows, dramatically increasing all defense for a short time. One per encounter. Instant. Plus 20 all defenses for 17.3 seconds. That's pretty good. He's already got the weapon specialization ruffian. Oh no, he's got weapon uh, focus ruffian, I think. Yeah, this grants a damage bonus. I might just get this. But again, he's not primarily a damage dealer. He's more a defender. Confident aim. This is a passive effect. Passive effect, 20% of graze is converted to hits times 1.2 minimum damage. That's pretty good. Discipline barrage. The fighter intensely focuses on her training, significantly raising accuracy for a short amount of time. Plus 10 accuracy for 17.3 seconds. Guardian stands. The fighter devotes all his or her energy to defending allies. Lowers accuracy, but increases deflection of nearby allies. Okay. Into the fray. The fighter lunges through the battle, pulling an enemy into immediate melee range. Two per encounter. Uh, effects. Range 5 meters. Effects full target. 14 to 21 crush. days for 5.8 seconds. Okay. Hmm. It's either going to be weapon specialization ruffian or vigorous defense. I'm going with vigorous defense, I think. I mean, defending is his main thing. 
The extra damage would be nice. It's not a huge damage boost though. One, so 15% more damage. That's pretty good, but its primary role is to defend. So vigorous defense it is. No new talent unlocks. Okay. Beef stick. Let's raise your stealth. Not enough to raise survival. Athletics wouldn't be bad, but mm, I'm gonna save the points. Barbarian abilities. Okay, I get the barbaric yell. I know what that does. Blooded. Force the barbarian hits so hard that or that ordinary means of defense can be easily overpowered. On attacks that normally target deflection, the barbarian will instead tar attack fortitude if it is lower defense. That's pretty damn good. Wild sprint. One stands alone. The barbarian makes a courageous stand against all attackers. Grants melee damage bonus when the barbarian is engaged by two or more enemies and the barbarian cannot be flanked unless engaged by more than three enemies okay and bloodlust imparts an unquenchable bloodlust to the barbarian increasing his or her speed temporarily in battle once he or she personally downed at least two enemies I like brute force I'm taking brute force. Ah. Let's raise your stuff. Boy, he looks hilarious. You got super duper lore. Get your survival and more survival. There we go. Still one short, got one rank less in stuff than everybody else, but better now. Ah, cool, he gets more phrases. Can't do level, so I can do level one or level two phrases. One stood against, all right, let's see what these are. Dull the edge, blunt the point. Reduces slashing and piercing damage of enemies in the area of effect. Times 0.9 slash, times 0.9 pierce, damage, rate 0.7 seconds. Thick grew their tongues, stumbling over the word, over words. Reduces concentration of enemies in the area of effect. Come, come soft winds of death, trains a portion of endurance from all enemies in the area of effect. It's not a lot of endurance, but that is pretty cool. One dozen stood against the power of the same. Decreases the duration of and defense against frightened and terrified effects for allies. Rhyme and Frost followed the footfalls of Karth. Allies leave a haz hazardous trail of frost whenever they move, hobbling and causing freeze damage to enemies. Sure handed. Illa knocked her arrows with speed. Decrease reload time and increase the speed of ranged attacks for all allies. Double reload speed times 1.2 rate of fire. That is pretty good. The fox from the farmer did run and leap. Reduces accuracy of disengagement attacks for enemies. kind of like this one. Now, usually I switch beef stick and edder to melee after the first shot, but as long as I'm not getting overwhelmed, the other characters stay in the missile uh, mode. Now, my spellcaster cast a lot, but still, this would be helpful. Yeah, I'm gonna get this. And out. 
stuff and your survival up. Alright, he gets level 3 spells now. So we got Arcane Dampener. Creates a nullifying field of antagonistic magical energy around the chosen point, suppressing all beneficial effects on enemies in the area of effect. Arduous Delay of Motion. Oh, you that, two of them, cool. Arduous Delay of Motion alters the perception of time for enemies in the area of effect, lowering their speed and movement. That's useful. Console Hot's Draining Touch. Castro becomes a toxic parasite, causing corrosive damage to the target. Weakening it and leeching a potion of its endurance. 30 corrode damage is endurance. Weakened for 26 seconds. That is useful. Crackling Bolt. Gaster becomes a living generator for a powerful bolt of electricity that streaks out in a straight line and bounces off walls, harming everything in its path. This could be dangerous to me, too. Good damage. The letter deleterious alacrity of motion. Caster draws upon his or her life force to gain and increase the speed and movement while draining his or her own endurance. I don't much like that considering he's already pretty low on endurance. Expose vulnerabilities. There's the enemy's combat vulnerabilities for all to see, reducing their damage reduction, deflection, and concentration. That is very useful. Kalikov's Minor Blights. Creates a ball of energy in the caster's hand that can be thrown at an enemy, causing burn, freeze, corrode, or shock damage to anyone caught in the area of effect. Blights are continually replenished until the spell ends. Until weapon changed for 78 seconds. Wow, so it'll basically last an entire battle. Doesn't say how much damage they do, though. But, okay. Lengraf's displaced image causes the caster to appear visually displaced, increasing their deflection and reflex for the duration. Metaletta's Bounding Missiles summons three missiles that pierce through the target and leap to two additional targets each. Noxious Burst spews forth a noxious cloud of rancid foulness that sickens anyone caught inside, doing a small amount of corrosive damage. Three point seven four meter radius. Rungrim's Repulsive Visage. The caster's face becomes a nightmarish mask of rotting, insect-infested flesh or other images of unspeakable horror, compelling all nearby foes to become terrified and sickened. Sickened for 2.86, terrified for 2.6. All right, I'm gonna want, I'm definitely taking exposed vulnerabilities. Hmm.
let's get this displaced image for his uh try to keep him alive lasts for a good long time too and now let's uh on your word edit his chance Sure-handed Illa knocked her arrows with speed. I want that one first. Then at the sight of their comrades, their hearts grew bold. And then, blessed was Wingrove, quickest of his tribe. going to leave off here. Next time we'll explore the finds Bay some more. Check out what else is in the um, this area. Maybe move on to a different area. And uh, yeah, we'll go from there.